My name is Rafael Rosendahl and I'm an artist who loves the internet, first of all. And I use the internet as my stage, as my main platform. It's where I feel most comfortable and it's something that interests me, something that I want to explore visually and I want to grasp all the aspects of the internet. I came from an animation background and a very visual background of drawing and I tried many materials. And when I used the computer I really fell in love and I felt this is a really great way for me to express myself. But coding was another thing, it was a wall. I li I've always liked math in high school, but coding was a thing, the if-then. And, the and then I met a friend who was doing very dry data and wanted to program more visually, so we started working together and that worked out well. So I will make a rough animation and he will add the interactivity and we work together. Well, what I've noticed is that artists are taking the internet more seriously, more and more. But interactivity is a boundary where they will be able to show videos online or GIF animations or web pages. They can tweet, they can tumble, all these things. But to add interactivity requires programming. And that is sort of a barrier which is kind of too bad because interactivity is a huge new frontier in depiction. So we've been able to make movies and animations and drawings and paintings, but now we can do interactive images. And what does that mean for art? Because in video games, the interactive depiction has been very deeply researched. What does it mean when you row in a canoe? What does the water look like when you move it? What does it look like when you shoot and the kickback to your shoulder? All these things that they think about to make things look real and maybe not even real but to feel real in game reality. This is a super exciting field and an exciting field of depiction which is a deep desire of humans. They want to depict their thoughts, they want to depict their world. It's kind of what makes humans different from animals. But then the question is, we need to find some kind of coding environment that's super easy for people to make games, to make interactive experiences, or to make tiny... Someone needs to invent the interactive equivalent of the GIF animation. Something that easy that people can modify. You see something, you switch it up. Just an example. My dream is to make a game where you enter a really dirty house and you have to clean it. And you have, to, you have different weapons, you have a vacuum cleaner, you have a mop, you have a rag, all these things. But the tools right now to make games are kind of expensive and not within my reach. I'm researching it, and especially in-browser games in 3D is still not really there yet. So I'm on it, I'm following it, but I hope that the tools for artists will become simpler and I hope that there's someone out there who can make these tools. I think our, our relationship with long narrative is changing where we're moving more towards fragmented long narrative. So we're not going to sit down for an hour and a half, but the long HBO shows are more popular. And I think it would be the same for video art, where you might develop a relationship in a more fragmented way, instead of sitting in a museum for two hours. Instead, it could be something where there's YouTubes coming and going of a certain artist, and you follow him for a year or two years. There's responses to those YouTubes, there's modifications, and that becomes a bigger narrative.